Question two. A rough plane is inclined to the horizontal at angle alpha, where tan alpha is three quarters. A small block B of mass five kilograms is held in equilibrium on the plane by a horizontal force of magnitude X newtons, as shown in figure one. The force acts in a vertical plane which contains a line of greatest slope of the inclined plane. The block B is modelled as a particle, and the magnitude of the normal reaction of the plane on B is 68.6 newtons. Using the model, part A, I find the magnitude of the frictional force acting on B. Now, with mechanics questions, first thing we should do is label some forces on our diagram. I'm going to start by labeling my reaction force. Now, the normal reaction force has been given to me as 68.6 newtons. Remember, a normal reaction acts perpendicular to the surface your particle is making contact with. So we're making contact with the plane here. And so the reaction force is perpendicular to that. So it's 90 degrees to the plane. I have the weight of the particle. The particle has a mass of five kilograms, but its weight, since we're looking vertically here, our acceleration is due to gravity, so we have 5g. I'm going to label my friction acting up the slope at this point. Because this particle is in equilibrium, I don't know whether this force x is stopping this particle slipping down the slope or whether or not it's on the brink of pushing it up the slope. So because I don't know where this particle is about to move, I can label my friction in either direction. And so for now, I'm going to label it up the slope. It's a good idea where possible to label the forces in terms of their components parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So this X force has this component acting perpendicular to the plane, which would be x sine alpha. And this component parallel to the plane, x cos alpha. My weight has a component perpendicular to the plane of 5g cos alpha, and a component that is acting down the plane of value 5g sine alpha. We are given tan alpha in our question, and so when we are given tan alpha, in this case, our opposite over our adjacent is 3 over 4. Now we should be in a position where we remember our Pythagorean triples. These are quite commonly used in mechanics questions. So if I know tan alpha to be 3 over 4, then I know sine alpha to be my opposite over our hypotenuse. So this would be a 3, 4, 5 right angle triangle. So sine alpha would be 3 fifths and cos alpha would be 4 fifths. Having labelled up my diagram with all the forces, I'm ready to start my question. So, reminder, we want to find the magnitude of the frictional force acting on B. Now, when it comes to solving mechanics questions, once we've drawn our diagram, the next thing we want to do is resolve forces in a chosen direction. So I'm going to start here by looking at forces perpendicular to this plane. And because this particle is in equilibrium, it means all the forces acting upward and out of the plane are equal to all the forces working down and into the plane. And so out of the plane, upwards, we have just our reaction force R, which is 68.6 newtons. And the forces that are acting down into the plane are both my X sine alpha, that's this component here from my X force, X sine alpha, because it is opposite my angle alpha, plus this component from my weight, which is 5g cos alpha, as it's adjacent to my angle alpha. Looking at my Pythagorean triple fractions here for sine alpha and cos alpha, I can substitute 3 fifths for sine alpha and 4 fifths for cos alpha. Of course, 4 fifths times 5 is 4. Subtracting 4g from both sides of this equation, then multiplying by 5 and dividing by 3, I get a value of x is equal to 49 newtons. I'm now going to look parallel to my plane. And again, because my particle is in equilibrium, 
This means all the forces acting up the plane are going to equal all the forces acting down the plane. Acting up the plane, I have this component of x, which is x cos alpha, plus I have my friction, which I've labelled also acting up the plane. And they're going to equal the only force I have currently acting down the plane, which is this component of my weight, which is 5g sine alpha. Again, using my Pythagorean triple values for cos alpha and sine alpha, I can write this as 4 fifths. Now remember that my x value is 49 newtons. So 4 fifths times 49 plus my friction is equal to 3 fifths times 5g, which is 3g. Multiplying my 4 fifths by 49 and then subtracting it from 3g, I actually get an answer on my calculator of negative 49 fifths for friction. Now the negative is actually going to come from the fact that I've clearly labelled my direction wrong here. The negative is telling me that the friction is actually working down the plane as opposed to up the plane. And so ignoring the negative sign for now, the value of my friction is 49 over 5 newtons. Now if we look at part ii for one mark, state the direction of the frictional force. Well we have now discovered as I assumed my friction to be acting up the slope, for my value of friction I have received a negative answer. This tells me that my friction should have actually been labelled acting down the slope. And so friction is acting down the slope in this case. The horizontal force of magnitude x is removed and b moves down the plane. Given that the coefficient of friction between b and the plane is 0.5, part b find the acceleration of b down the plane. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is start with a new diagram. Now that my X has been removed, it's a good idea to sketch a new diagram and label the forces. Many of the forces remain unchanged. I still have a reaction force, although the value now we do not know because this X component has been removed. The value of 68.6 .6 is no longer applicable. So we don't know what R is, but we do still have a reaction force. I can label my friction. Now that I know my particle B is moving down the plane, friction always opposes movement, so friction will be working up the plane as the particle moves down. Since the particle is moving down, I can label my acceleration in the downward direction as acceleration acts in the direction of movement. My weight remains the same. It is still five kilograms and then my acceleration due to gravity. And I still have the same two components here. I'm labeling my coefficient of friction near to my diagram. And so that's the coefficient of friction between my particle and the plane. Since alpha remains the same, these Pythagorean triple values for tan alpha, sine alpha, and cos alpha will still apply. So if we start by resolving perpendicular to the plane in this case, perpendicular it is still in equilibrium. So I can still write that the force is acting out of the plane. In this case, my reaction force R is equal to all the forces acting into the plane, which is from my component here of weight, which is 5G cos alpha. Substituting my 4 fifths of cos alpha into this gives me that R is equal to 4G. Now I can resolve parallel to the slope. Now this time, because we are not in equilibrium, we are looking at our lovely F equals MA equation, which is the resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And so for this, we do have a positive and negative value on the slope. This particle is moving down the slope. So we're going to take downwards to be the positive direction. And so when we look for the resultant force, we are looking for the force acting down the slope. In this case, that's from weight, this component here of 5g sine alpha. That is being opposed by friction, which is acting up the slope. And that is equal to our mass, 
five kilograms times acceleration, which we're trying to find. So I have my resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration. What do we know about friction? Well, friction takes a maximum value mu r, and our friction value we know to be maxed here because our particle is sliding down the slope. So friction is equal to my coefficient 0.5 given to me in the question, multiplied by my r value, which I've already found to be 4g. This means my value of friction is 2g. I've got my value of friction now to be 2g. I know my value of sine alpha to be 3 fifths. So I can substitute those now into my f equals ma equation. This gives me 5g times 3 fifths, which is 3g. Subtract my friction value, which I found to be 2g. And then dividing by 5 to get my acceleration. Evaluating this on my calculator gives me an exact answer of 1.96 meters per second squared.